into the cloud. So it's available for you too, should you like the recording also. So we start in a comfortable seat. And a block, if you're sitting in hero's pose, a block and a blanket. So hero's pose. Hero, or vira, the Sanskrit root for hero's pose, means, among other things, not just warrior or strong. It also means brave. So we have it both in hero's pose and in warrior too. So it is the seat of the brave, the seat of the strong. But sometimes hero's pose is not comfortable. And then sukhasana, cross-legged, may be a better choice. What I invite you to do is invite in variation. So it, just be conscious. Last time I sat on my mat, I chose cross-legged. So today, I'm going to choose something slightly different. You want to be comfortable. That is the key amongst all. Creating a solid, grounded seat. Letting gravity, the earth element of the legs, descend. And this is the exhalation. So you meet the earth, accept the invitation to release downward. Feeling the support for your pelvis, whether you're sitting in hero's pose or in sukhasana, cross-legged pose. The pelvis, as you rock from side to side, feeling this bowl, the chalice. As you move the hips, so as you move the pelvis, the hips has to move with it, and the spine is also accommodating. So the pelvis is this cross section, this intersection, it's a better word, intersection where your legs and your spine meet up. And the communication that between the two of them has to flow through the pelvis for ease of movement. If there's lack of communication in the pelvis, then we get stuck above or below. The element of the pelvis is water, fluidity, fluidity. So now we come to let the chalice settle. We're gonna turn sideways and notice if your chalice is dipping backwards or front. Are you overarching or rounding the back? For overarching, come back a little bit. Settle back so that it's not so rigid or harsh. And if you're rounding, you may just need a little bit more height under your seat. So that our shoulders rest over the hips and the ears on top of the shoulders, the neutral seat, where there is the least amount of effort in sitting upright. Let there be a sense of lengthening upward. And as you bring a hand to your sacrum, with the middle finger pointing down and just maybe about the crack. And your hand, your palm is kind of the shape of your sacrum, the five fused vertebrae. Place your other hand on top of your sternum. Very similar skeletal part. And these two work together. Notice as your sacrum draws back and out of your body, your sternum collapses. It travels in the same direction. And as you draw the sacrum in and upward, your sternum lifts in and upward. And the lifting of the sternum, if we try to lift the heart center without asking the sacrum to help out, there is a tremendous amount of struggle and we can't hold it. 
We want a sense of buoyancy and lightness upward under the heart, under the sternum. And that comes from this lifting of the sacrum. So maintaining that as you allow the shoulders to just relax down the back, lengthening up through the crown of the head. And then let there be a sense of this upward movement and place a hand on top of your head. It's a very gentle, you're not compressing the spine. It's a very gentle touch. And imagine that your hand is magnetized. And as you sit, you continue to reach the crown of the head up towards the hand, reaching it up towards the hand, but keep the legs soft. So where does the lift come from? Comes from, again, the sacrum, drawing in and up. So as if you had three arms, keep your imaginary arm on top of your head and take your real arms and rest them on your thighs. Allow your eyes to close and keep a soft gaze on the mat in front. I'm gonna tilt the camera up a little bit here. Kriya yoga. Kriya means action. And yoga is action. Sutra 2, 1, chapter 2, verse 1 says, for whatever it is we're doing on our mat, for, it, for us to call it yoga, we have to have three things present. There has to be conscious effort for positive change. Conscious effort. That's Kriya. Then there has to be Svadhyaya, self-awareness self-inquiry and then the third is pranidana surrender surrender all notions of control over the outcome to a higher source and we have many names for the higher source western hemisphere god Yave. Buddha is not God, though sometimes people confuse that in the spiritual teaching. He was a student, as we are, a student of ease. So let yourself surrender a sense of your control over outcome. Own the effort and know why you put forth the effort. But know that the energy, the source energy that is you, within you, and outside of you, we have no control over that. Allow the breath to begin to deepen. Let there be a gentle sense of expansion of the belly as you breathe in. Sense of softening and grounding on the out breath. As you breathe in and breathe out silently, chant Om. Om is the sound of the source energy. It is a sound of the primordial hum of the universe. And when we chant Om, we connect directly to this energy. This energy heals, supports, nurtures, and holds us. It 
It is always here. Bringing the palms together and heart center. Let the thumbs touch the breastbone. And when we express OM loud, we do embrace every language in the world. And here we can only do it on the exhalation as opposed to both in and out breath. The first syllable is the AH sound. So the sound is A-U-M, even though it comes out as O-M. And it starts at the back of the throat, rolls up over the palate, and then ends with the mm sound. Then there is silence. This silence is called anagata. In this silence, there is still the vibration of OM. We are still connected. So we'll start our class with three OMs. I invite you to join me. We'll take a deep breath in. Oh. Oh. Bowing your head towards your heart, your inner vibration, your inner light. That which chose to come forth and manifest into your body to be separate from the source energy for a bit. But at some point will return and merge back in the source. As you inhale, as open the eyes, draw the gaze up, as interlace the fingers, and we begin with the asana, the poses. Let's stretch to the right, to the left. Coming up to center, let's twist. Inhaling up and go the other way. Let's come up again. Interlace the fingers with the other thumb in front, other thumb in front, extending up, reaching up, straightening the elbow. So fingers are interlaced, extending up. Really shrink wrap everything in towards center lines so of tight. And then now let's time it, let's side bend to the left first. Yin side, the cooling side. And I'm sorry, I'm going back, I'm mirroring. I went right. We'll go to the other side and then we'll go to the right. Sometimes I get really screwed up on this mirroring business. Then we go back up and let's twist to the left first. Inhaling up, reaching up and to the other side. Inhaling up again and take the hands down. And let's bring the legs out in front, seated staff pose, Dandasana. And take the hands either beside the hips or slightly back so that you can come maintain this long lifted spine, a, a sense of a neutral spine still. And as you lengthen up through the crown of the head, that imaginary third arm is still there. Draw the shoulder blades together. Draw the shoulder blades together. Squeezing in as you ground down through the legs. Squeeze in, squeeze in, squeeze the shoulder blades in. 
And then, whew, let's let that go. We'll take the soles of the feet together and cut them out quite wide. So not, don't try to bring your heels in very tight. Use your hands instead. So from way back here, I'm just gonna hop my hips forward now. And I'm gonna walk my hands in. Lift the heart up, lift the heart up, and let the knees just draw out as I press the big toe mounts together. Keep the hands back, keep the hands back so we can keep the shoulder blades drawing together, lifting up through the heart center. But lengthen the inseam, so draw from the inner groins to the inner knees, reaching out, reaching out, reaching out, and begin to let your book open. So the tops of the feet begins to roll towards the floor. Can you read your book? Is it a good book? Page Turner. So let's bring the soles of the feet back together and draw the knees back together. And we're just gonna come right onto it. Tabletop. Hands under. Cat and cow. Rounding as you exhale, one of the best movements for the spine. Arch on the in breath. Exhale, rounding tailbone to the earth, a crown of the head to the earth. And then inhale, tailbone to the sky, crown of the head to the sky. Right now we are just irrigating the spine and the discs. It's a beautiful thing. And let's come to neutral. And then draw the right leg back, press the toes down, and then reach back through the right heel. So let's get a little bit of length on the calf. Really good to get a little length in there. We know the soleus from last week is underneath. So bend your knee a little bit, bend your knee, your right knee a little bit. And we took the gas strap out of it. Let's straighten it again. We'll step back through plank, switch out. So now left leg is back, right knee has come down. Reaching back. Yep, gas drop done. Let's bend the knee a little bit. Keep the heel drawing back. That second heart, a little bit length. Straighten the leg again. Step back to plank pose. And back to downward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Take a moment, play with your dog. Now your dog can also be puppy pose. But maybe paddling a little bit, one heel to the floor, other heel to the floor, back and forth. How is the dog feeling today? It's an inversion. Head below the heart. It's a great pose to get a little bit more juice into the brain. Let it be a little wiggly. Let's lift the heels up, lift the tailbone up, lift the tailbone as high as you can. Keep the knees up, maybe a little bit, bent tailbone high. Now the root of chakra, the tailbone, the seed sound is lum, lum. So now silently call out to your tailbone. Lum, 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 lum. Calling out, call out to your tailbone. Let it know that you would like to connect. And as you do, can you get a little bit more lift, a little bit more lift, a little bit more lift? So you can say the seed sound, the seed mantra, both the in-breath and the out-breath. One more breath. And then exhale. Take the knees down, come down into wide knee child's pose. Wide knee child's pose. And then sitting up, sitting up. 
and just watch for a quick second. So it may seem really weird to be calling out to your tailbone. We are a vibrational being and every chakra in our body has its own seed sound. So the two seed sounds that we're gonna play with today is the tailbone and then the sacral, which is vum. If there's again a stuck energy in the area, we can't access it physically. So this is how Firuza Razvi explained it. I really like this. When it, we chant the seed sound, that's why I'm calling out a name. So if I say Sally, Sally's gonna look up and say, hey, I'm here. Dennis, John, yes, I'm here. That's what we're doing to our tailbone energy. So when I go lang, 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 this is the energy in my body I'm trying to grab, not too much. I'm pulling up, so in downward facing dog, we need to get this lift so everything pulls up so that everything is light. So we're going to come back into downward facing dog. And I call out again. Lum, lum, lum. So as you tuck the toes under and lift up, lifting up silently. Lum, 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 lum. Call out to your tailbone. Let the energy become buoyant and lift it. Buoyant and lift it for our root chakra. Root chakra. Lum, 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 lum. One more breath. Connecting earth to heavens. Looking up as you inhale next. Walk a step, the feet to the front of the mat. Forward fold. Now inhale, looking up, looking up. Soften the knees, soften the knees. Take your hands to the hips, ground the heels, press all the way up. Boom, Tadasana, Tadasana. Take the strap. And make a little loop, slightly narrower than your shoulders, but your shoulder flexibility is going to determine how wide. You're going to slide your hands through the strap behind so that your hands are a little bit narrower than the shoulders. A little bit narrower than the shoulders. I'll do it from the side. You can see me easier here. So it's legs consolidated, so this is very Iyengar. If it is available, draw the legs completely together, big toes touching, inner heels touching, as if you have a yoni leg. Squeezing everything into towards center, ground down through the heels, lengthening up through the crown of the head. So we're just getting familiar with the position. Now, as you inhale, reach through the crown of the head, exhale, ground, and then draw, draw the shoulder blades together, draw the shoulder blades firmly together on the back, firmly together on the back body, firmly together on the back body. Squeeze together. Now let's call out to the sacrum, bam! Silently, bum, 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 as you squeeze your shoulder blades together, bum, bum, bum. Sacrum is awakening, drawing inward, facilitating the lift. Can you begin to take the arms up? Keep the heart lifted, keep the heart lifted as you draw the arms up. Let the lift come from the sacrum, energizing. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, squeeze, 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 squeeze. squeeze. And then exhale, releasing down. We're going to take the strap off. And then inhale, tall mountain, take the arms up to the sky, reaching up for grounding. Grounding. So that is our lam, 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 lam. That is the feet. The heels are firm and solid. Shrink wrapping everything into the center line. Shrink wrap to the center. So become as narrow and tall. So instead of calling this 
our Yamuka Rikshasana, which would be handstand. We're just going to call it tall mountain, but you are in handstand right now. Exhale, take the hands down. And then I invite you to place a chair on your mat. This is, a, I think, a lovely way to practice sun salutations, especially if it's an evening practice, but also if there is some tightness in hips or spine or shoulders. It just makes it gentler. But you are also welcome to not. But I like this one. And today's my birthday, so you should do what I'm saying. So yes, 55 sound salutations. Here we go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Standing in mountain pose. Fingertips stretching down towards the earth with the crown of the head reaching up, reaching up. Inhale, draw the arms out and up. And exhale, fold forward, hands to the chair or blocks of floor. Inhaling, half forward fold. Take the left foot all the way up to the chair, shin bumps into the chair and step the right leg all the way back as far as you can get it. Take the knee down, top of the foot comes down, and then inhaling, lunge, reaching up. Exhale, hands to the chair, tuck the back toes under, and we draw back to downward facing dog. Inhale, forward to plank pose, plank pose. So plank pose is exactly like mountain pose, Tadasana. Gravity just messes with it a little bit. Exhale, let's take the knees down, release the tops of the feet again. Hands to the hips, Ustrasana, camel pose. So inhale, lift the heart, draw the sacrum in, draw the sacrum in, lift, 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 lift. And then we inhale back up, tuck the toes, and we are back in downward facing dog. Looking up on in the in-breath as you exhale, right foot goes to the chair, left leg back and down, lunge again, inhaling, hands can come up, they can stay on the chair or the knee too. Exhaling, hands to the chair, slide the right foot back a wee bit. So you have clearance to step up to the chair into the forward fold. Soften the knees, inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Tall mountain, and exhale, mountain pose. Left side, inhaling, tall mountain. Exhale, forward fold, left side leads. Inhale, half forward fold, this is a little back bend. So in the half forward fold, pit stop here. Sacrum is moving in. Bum, 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 call out to your sacrum. Let your heart center. Expand. And now let's bring the right foot all the way up to the chair. Left leg back. Lunge again. Knee comes down. Top of the foot comes down. Lunge. Low lunge. Exhaling. Hands to the chair. Tuck the back toes under. And draw back to downward facing dog. Inhale. Plank. Knees down, tops of the feet releases to the mat. Hands to the hips, thumbs on the sacrum. So that's a little helpful. A little mother's helper here to get the sacrum to draw in and up, facilitating our back bend. Ustrasana. Lift the heart, lift the heart. Elbows together, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. squeeze. Inhaling back up, we come. Tuck the toes under, downward facing dog. Looking up on the in breath, exhale, left foot travels to the chair. Right knee comes down, top of the feet, down. Inhaling again, lift the arms like a big Sunday sweep up. Hands down, tuck the back toes under, slide the left foot back a wee bit again to make sure that you have clearance. Exhale, forward fold. 
Soften the knees. Press all the way up from earth to sky. Hands at heart center. One down. 54 to go. Now, if you would like, hold on to the chair if you like this variation. If you would like more classical, it's a little spicier, move your chair out of the way. Maybe have blocks if you like that. So it's not like one is wrong and one is right. The one that's right is the one that feels best for you today. Tadasana, consolidation. Everything draws to the midline. Tailbone to the heels. Sacrum in and up. Inhale, tall mountain. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. I'm going to be watching you here. I'll cue you. Inhale, half forward fold. Lift the heart. This is your back bend. Well, tall blocks, tall blocks. Yeah. And then exhale, step the right leg back. Step the right leg back. Let the, again, let a uh, right knee come down. Inhaling again. Lunge, reaching. Exhale, hands down. We step back to plank pose on the floor. Hands on the floor. If in the chair, we'll meet up in plank. If you're using the chair, you'll do a strasana again. If on the floor, knees down, Roly poly all the way down onto your belly. Both in Strasana and here, call out to your sacrum. Bum, bum, bum. Inhale, lift the heart as you move the sacrum in. Lift the heart, move the sacrum in. Cobra pose or Ustrasana, so one or the other. Exhale, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. That would be the lum. Get the lift. Lum, lum, lum. Lift, 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 lift. Looking up on the in breath. And as you exhale, step the right foot up to the chair or hands. Help it along the way. Left knee comes down. Inhale, lifting up. Low lunge. Hands to the mat, tuck the back toes under, stepping up, forward fold. Inhale, soften knees, lengthen spine, up we come. Exhale, mountain pose, consolidation. Inhale, tall mountain. Exhale, forward fold, all the way down. Inhale, half forward fold, this is your little back bend. And exhale, left leg leads back. Knee comes down. Inhaling, hands to the sky. Can stay down if it feels better. Exhale, hands down, plank pose. Nice. On plank pose. Exhale, knees down, roly poly all the way down. So hips, belly, heart, forehead. Hands by the side, chest, draw the shoulder blades down and together, down and together, down and together. As you inhale, sacrum moves in, bum, 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 bum. It facilitates a back bend up into cobra pose, tops of the feet pressing down, tops of the feet pressing down. Shoulders down, shoulders down. If it's available, straighten the elbows into upward facing dog. So only the tops of the feet and the hands are touching. Only the tops of the top of the feet and the hands. Exhale back to downward facing dog. Looking up on the inhalation. And as you exhale, step your left foot up between the hands. Right knee comes down. Top of the foot down. Inhale. Celebrate. Exhale, hands down. Step up to the front of the mat. Forward fold. And then inhale, lengthen spine, soften knee. Up we come. All the way up, tall mountain. 
and exhale. Tadasana. Two down. You're doing good. I said that earlier in the week. I feel a little bit like Tom Zoyer. I'm asking everybody else to paint my fence. It's just easier for me. With the chair. So everybody has a chair. Well, you do not have a chair, but you have blocks. You're going to be okay. You're going to sit on your katukas wilt because you're going to do reverse tabletop. The rest of us are just going to do it on the chair. So without a chair, we start many classes with that, lifting up into a reverse tabletop on the chair. It's quite lovely. So you sit all the way forward on the tush. Well, you will have your knees bend up and your hands behind. I'll show you here. So here's the pose that you're going to be doing on the floor. We're just going to be doing it on the chair. So with the hands on the chair, fingers pointing back. And now as you inhale, lift the seat. So for Wilt, you can do a reverse tabletop. Same thing, we're just starting a little bit higher. Sally, you too, good job. Lifting up, lift, 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 lift. And then exhale, releasing down. Turn the hands, turn the hands on the chair or on the floor. So the fingers are not pointing forward. <laughs> it's playtime. Draw the shoulder blades together. Draw the shoulder blades together. Now this time, draw the crown of the head back, looking back as you draw the shoulder blades together, draw the shoulder blades together. So we're starting at the crown of the head and we let that be the invitation to lift up, lift up, lift up. And then slowly releasing back down again. Now let's stand up. Triangle pose. So let's use either your chair or blocks, just because it's nice to have. And stand the long way on your mat. Stand the long way on the mat. Again, we start in mountain pose. Everything is consolidated, fingertips towards the earth. Now silently, lum, 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 lum. Can you feel how your tailbone is waking up, rooting you down? Lum, 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 lum. Vam, 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 providing lift, providing lift. So the sacrum sits into the pelvic joint. Now think of it like a scalabous sword. It's kind of, kind of very stuck there. That's a good thing, but there's a little bit of wiggle room. And we need a little bit of wiggle room. We don't want it fused in completely because then we begin to walk like penguins. Mom, 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 mom. Feel the lifting of the heart. Take the fingertips together at heart center. And as you inhale, step or jump your feet wide apart. Turning right foot in 10 to 15 degrees. Left leg out 90 degrees. And then exhale as bend the left leg, bending the left leg. Warrior two, we know this. We call it warrior, but we could call it brave pose. Are you feeling brave? Very brave. Now straightening your left leg. Reach out over your left leg. Extend, Utita, extend, extend, extend. And take your hand to the shin or your block. Take the right arm to the sky right arm to the sky. Now, lam and vam, they're doing two different things. Lam, 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 your tailbone rooting down. But the sacrum moving in and up. So begin to lean back, lean back, looking up, leaning back, looking up. So we're adding a back bend. 
as if you're bathing yourself in all the graces of the world. The spine is moving in, shoulder blades moving together, shoulder blades moving together. And then come back up to center. Soften your left knee. Inhale all the way up. Boom. Let's switch to the other side. So I'm going to take my hands down while I orient my feet. With the hands on the hips, a little revisit from last week. Is your pelvis, is your chalice balanced from side to side? Or is one lower than the other? Typically, that would be the right, right now. Can you pull it up so that your hips, your pelvis is the same height? And from here, exhale, bend the right knee. Bend the right knee. Pelvis still balanced. Tailbone hanging straight down. Earth energy. Adding the arms. Draw the shoulder blades together. Draw the shoulder blades together. Give them a good squeeze, wrench, soak back there. And we'll straighten right leg. Inhale, lengthen the right side body. And we hinge. Draw the left arm to the sky. If you have a shoulder thing, you can always drape it behind. Hold the hip. So effort and ease, effort and ease, the two energies that we are combining. Effort is the earth energy in our legs. Ease, space energy of the crown chakra. Draw the gaze towards the sky as you move the sacrum in. So if we have lum, 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 tailbone down, lum, 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 sacrum in. Heart lifts, heart lifts. Heart lift, looking up, looking up. Let the chin lengthen away from the chest, opening your throat chakra. So the chin reaches back, reaches back. One more breath. And then inhale all the way up. Take the hands to the hips, widen the stance a little bit, lengthening up through the front spine. So sacrum is moving in. And we exhale, fold forward, fold forward. Hands right under the shoulders on blocks or the floor or a chair. Bending the knees, let the knee bend, let the knees bend. Well, will your legs go wider? You too, Janice. So Prasarda Padottanasana, wide legged foot pose. Check your feet, are they slightly pigeon toed? Slightly pigeon toed. So the heels, sense of the heels are kicking out. Toes slightly turned in. And then inhale, looking up, looking up. As we did in Downward Facing Dog, you want to call out to your tailbone. Let it lift, 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 lift. Sacrum moves in, draws the sternum forward. So the spine is lengthening into a back bend. Now, first walk the hands forward. Walk the hands forward. Reaching, reaching. Wide legged downward facing dog. The head hangs. The head hangs. Belly drawing in and up, in and up. So keep talking to your tailbone. It has to lift up, it has to lift up, it has to lift up, or the head ain't going down. It ain't happening otherwise. We need to lift to lower. Walk the hands back under the shoulders. And then pivoting on the mat. Walk the hands to the front of your mat, step back through downward facing dog.
And we'll take the knees down. Take the knees wide, wide knee child's pose. Sitting back. Let the breath quiet down. Let it be restful. Ease. The sense of tailbone descending. And then here now, take your hands under the shoulders and sit up. We're going to go back to Dandasana. This time, let's sit up on a blanket edge. So I have my blanket. I'm going to fold it one more time. One or two blankets. Or there is some such a thing as too much height. So a blanket is good. You can also sit up on a block. But we're just going to adjust hamstrings by bending knees. So let's start by taking the right knee in. Getting it in as snug as we can. So now earth energy in the legs. And if we can, we feel that we're being pulled back. It's a sacrum that is dropping out of the seat bend the straight leg just bend the straight leg allowing you to move the sacrum in move the sacrum in have a chat with it call out to it silently again the seed sound bum 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 b-a-m bum 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 to facilitate the lift spine moves in draw the shoulder blades together on the back Coat hanger, your right knee, take the left hand back, lengthening up, lengthening up, lengthening up. The spine moves in, explore, pressing your straight leg down if it's bent. Can you get a little bit more length on it without surrendering the sacrum outward? Inhale, lengthening up through the crown of the head, space. Exhale, twist. Pause at the end of the deepening of the twist. Wait for the in-breath comes again. Lengthening up, lengthening up. So the left arm is, did I say the right arm? I'm looking at you. I mean the left arm is around the right knee. Thank you, but you guys are awesome at following direction. We were doing Mary Chastana 1. That's what you were doing, but I'm guiding into Mary Chastana through you. So apologize for the confusion. Left arm, right knee, Mary Chastana 3. You only have to do the other one if you are pregnant or menstruating, and I think none of you. So we're good. Lengthening up, pull the spine in, pull the spine in, pull the spine in. Looking over your right shoulder. A little squeeze and soak, squeeze and soak, squeeze and soak. Slowly releasing back. Let's straighten the leg out and switch. Hook the arm, that would be the, so we have the left knee in, hook the right arm around the left knee. Mary Chasana three, right, right arm, left knee. Mary Chasana one is where we use an open twist. This is a closed twist. Again, spine is king, spine is king. Is your spine neutral, neutral? Maybe even a slight 
back bend in the upper back. So draw the shoulder blades together, draw the shoulder blades together. It may mean that you back off a little bit from holding so you're not rounding forward. Give yourself space. Sacrum moves in, sacrum moves in. Sternum lifts and broaden. Squeeze the shoulder blades together on the back. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And we begin to move into the twist. The in-breath lifts, out-breath deepens. There is a space between the in-breath and the out-breath, and between the out-breath and the in-breath. Again, the anagata. That space is pregnant with potential. Can you be present in the emptiness of the space? Is there a little bit more movement to be had? So every pose is a dynamic event. It's a wait and see, not pushing forward, forcing forward without awareness. Svadhyaya. Slowly release back to center. Take the legs out, Dandasana. Seated staff pose, hands beside the hips on the blanket or on the mat. Lifting up, lifting up. Shoulder blades again, draws together, draws together, draws together. And let's hop on down so we can come all the way down. Have a block near by. Have your strap and come on to your back. Take your block, lift the hips, slide the block under the sacrum. So I'm on the middle height block. Do the one that feels good to you. Draw the shoulder blades together. Draw the shoulder blades together. And then draw the palms towards the earth without disturbing the shoulders. Breathing. Let the sediment settle. You may choose to stay here in supported bridge pose. You can also, for the pretty carny, draw one knee in at a time, test the waters, keep the lifting broadness off the shoulders and the heart as you straighten the legs. So your upper body is still in bridge pose. Shoulders drawing down, sacrum resting on the support. Shoulder blades moving together. Breathe. Now, connecting to your earth chakra. Lam, your tailbone. It's a little bit more challenging to connect to this energy when we are flipped about. Take your legs a little bit apart, about a foot or so, no more. Lam, tailbone, let it be the tailbone that pulls the legs back together. I know it sounds weird, but go with me. 
so that you're staying connected throughout. One more breath. And then bend the knees. Slowly release one leg at a time. On the in breath, press the feet down, squeeze the buns, really connect to your earth energy and also your sacral energy relaxing down. Again, inhale, press the feet down, squeeze everything you can grab between belly button and knees and relax again. Do it three more times. And then after the third extra time, then gently just lift up high enough where you can lower all the way down. And taking your strap and maybe a little bit wider from what we had it before, it's so slightly wider than your shoulders. I'm just gonna loop my upper thighs. It's not a tourniquet, so they're not consolidated. So I have a little bit of space between my thighs and then release the legs long for Shavasana. And now simply let your legs relax outward into the strap. So there is still a sense of consolidation, but now there is no effort, none whatsoever. Allow yourself to surrender all effort. If the mind is very chatty today, the use of mantras, literally translating to path for the mind, can be OM. Breathing in OM, silently say OM, breathing out OM. And let the vibration of Om wash over you. And let the effort, if you are chanting OM silently, become less and less. So that the vibration becomes more and more.
and gently begin to deepen your breath. Wiggling fingers and toes. Bend up your knees and slide the belt off. Then hug the knees in and rock from side to side. To roll all the way over onto one side. Right for activity. Left if you're going to go right into a nap. And we'll press up into a comfortable seated posture. We'll bring our palms together at heart center. And we'll close with one ohm. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Exhale and bow your head towards your heart. Your light, your life, treasure it for the gift that it is. Namaste. Namaste. So welcome back. Yay. Happy Wonderful. birthday. Thank you. Are you feeling like you just got a whole new fill up of energy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, happy birthday, Ann. Thank you. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's a good day. I'm going to be rude. I thought you said.